Welcome back to the Tom and Frenchie podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by the legends at Filter Brewing. Live show next week. Frenchie, you excited? I am too excited. Thanks to Filter for yeah. making this live show possible. Everyone in the Patreon is already invited. Still a chance to come. Join the Patreon and um, you will be at our live show slash Christmas party. Yeah, they're going to have to start filling up those vats at the brewery oh, as the boys are coming. <laughs> the boys are coming. Fill up them vats. Right. <laughs> oh, man. It's good to be back in the studio, to be honest. Oh, yeah. We've been away fucking on the road, like a couple of road dogs. <laughs> oh, road warriors. I feel mm. like a, a hitchhiker. Oh, yeah. yeah Except like... not as hot. Do you think hitchhikers are hot? Usually in the in my dreams. Well, they don't have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a lot of body fat, which is good. Why? Because they're hitchhikers. Like if they can't afford a, a lift, they can't afford a meal lever. <laughs> That's true. So and they got to be thin to fit in. Because generally, if you pick up pick up a hitchhiker, you'll put them in the middle between two people. Yep. In the back seat, so you can keep an eye on them. Yep. Um, and then sometimes you just hold, you say, whoever's in the back, say, hold each one of their hands yes, in case they try to pull out a knife and sort of just shank you. So they're all often quite thin too. So you're right, they are hot. And also, hitchhikers have great potential for a glow up because they're all scraggly. Mm. They're not showering much. You're no like, makeup. Who's, yeah. who's this dirty, smelly man? Oh, one shower and a shave. Oh, wow. Is what? that Fabio? <laughs> Is that Fabio? <laughs> oh, wow. Hi, it's me, Fabio. Oh. I was hitchhiking through New Zealand and nobody knew it was me. But then I shaved and took off my shirt and started to disco disco. Mm. And now they all know. So ripped, Fabio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for picking me up. I remember we were driving I'm... on tour. Mm. And do you remember this? We were all kind of like, I think we were kind of hungover. We weren't in the best shape. All of us squished together in the car. Mm. We did have seats behind us. It was like a minivan situation. Yes. <laughs> and we saw the most terrifying hitchhiker, but we all had that moment like it could be good for the podcast. Yeah. We were like, it might be the end yeah. of our lives. But the, the problem with hitchhikers is that you never have enough time to really slow mm. down off. They do it on busy roads often. Like you can't scan every inch of their body for blood. Because <laughs> that's what you want to be looking for, like red, literal red flags. No, no, but I'm saying if you're going 50, even just 50 Ks an hour, you see oh, a hitchhiker, yeah. you're like, oh, hitchhiker. Yo, should we pick them? Oh, we're already fucking past yeah. them. I'm not yeah. going to like stop. And then It's hard to make a decision that could change your life so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, we me I remember we saw this one hitchhiker. Alex is like, yo, let's pick up that hitchhiker. I'm like, oh yeah, I think she's just the counter girl at Macca's. We're a drive through right now. She's not yeah. She's not asking for a list. Like, she's asking for kept, our order. Yeah, and he oh. kept asking her to hop in the car. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Why'd you have a thumb up then? <laughs> <laughs> I think she said, good job good on job. ordering. Good job on the job <laughs> driving. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. It Who is, is it? Who is a hitchhiker? Mm. So we just got back from New Zealand. Um, my first time in New Zealand. Wow. Yeah, weird, right? Mm. It's so close. I don't know why I haven't been sooner. I've been to Perth and that is fucking 10 times as long to get to. <laughs> yeah. Maybe twice, but it feels 10 times longer. I'll tell you why. It's because of the orcs. You saw Lord yeah. of the Rings and you're like, I want to go to Riverdale. Riverdale? Riverdale. <laughs> Rivendell? For that damn Jughead. What's his name? <laughs> Archie and Jughead. What the fuck's the, the Hobbit place called? I don't know. Mordor? It's something like that, bro. I don't what? know. What? Riverdale and Jughead. We'll Betty Hobbiton? and Veronica. Hobbiton. Hobbiton. What am you I thinking, thinking of? You were thinking of Hobbiton, surely. I don't Hobbiton, know, bro. I You're guess. a full nerd on Lord of the Rings, I found out. You're saying all these niche words from the book. You wanted to go to Hobbiton. You don't want I to did. go to Mordor. No, that's true. And you don't know where that flight's going to land. You're right. And I think we went to Mordor when we landed in uh, <laughs> what was the worst area we went to? Um, you are you talking what? I don't know. We were in pretty nice areas. Lower was, Hut was Lower it? Hut. There was a few orc type. Lower characters. Hut. Late night Lower Hut was a bit. That was the yeah, the red headed bandana. Yeah, man. That's, that's where we saw a redhead with a do rag. A do rag. <laughs> And he was pretty. He was like, Every time you do that thing you do. Do you think that song's about a do rag? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it, but I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a bit of a singing mood. It's been too long since oh, we've yeah. um, 
had a song on this podcast. Anyway, hello to our international listeners and yes. especially the Cherkazis and New Zealand ones who's got around our show. It was fucking mental. We always have the craziest shows. And we had a first. Mm. We had – I actually didn't see the TikTok until after the show. No, I did. But we had a girl in the crowd mm-hmm. who, who dropped this TikTok. Um, should we play the TikTok or should we – Yeah, let's, let's listen to the TikTok. This is uh, randomly on TikTok. Frenchie got a few tags in the comments. Yeah, let's, I've, let's I've see. Been... To put out on the internet, you may hold against me if I don't do it. Yo, no Frenchie, French dog, the comedian. Well, guess what? Oh, here's a photo of him. That was a sexy I photo. I am going to see yeah, Frenchie nice. in two weeks. If Frenchie says anything to me while I'm in that crowd, Anything at all? I shit. I will get his face tattooed somewhere on my body. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, mum. It's not gonna happen. I think my seats are like right at the back. Mentions that I look like a vivid or something. Because I I do. I look like a red sharpie. Red sharpie. I will do it. I will fucking do it. All good. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. What's her name again? What's her TikTok name? Uh, cherry, Sherry, Sherry, or Cherry? See, cherry, C- oh, Cherry, Cherry twenty, Cherry, cherry twenty two. That makes more sense with the red hair. So Cherry <laughs> wrote that, and I love. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put this out there and hold me to it. Like I hope it doesn't happen. If he says one thing, if he to says me, anything to me, if he looks at looks, me. <laughs> if he says his stand-up routine towards me, <laughs> if he talks into the microphone, if he uses both of his legs, I've already got it. I've already got the tattoo. <laughs> I've got the tattoo. I will get the tattoo. I already have. I'll get another one. Fuck it. <laughs> and the funny thing was. She, w- she wasn't at the back. She was very close to the back. Yeah. TikTok says she was going to be at the back. Mm. And, and I think I saw it just before the show. And I was like, I, I think I've forgotten about it. And then, yeah, front yeah. row. I was like, is that a Sharpie? Is that what she said? <laughs> a, vivid. a Vivid. I said, what's that Vivid doing in the front row? <laughs> the red Vivid? That. Vivid. They must call Sharpies Vivids in right. New Zealand. And we found out they call things just differently oh, yeah. for no apparent reason. Oh, yeah. You're three hours away in New Zealand. <laughs> Use your big brother's slang. Don't try to start your own cool mm. little brother slang. That's what's going on there. Yeah. So she's like, so she, I think she actually moved down mid show. Oh. Because I think the front row is pretty empty. She's like, he hasn't said my name. He hasn't said anything. I got to move closer. Tough because she started getting upstaged. Oh, we need to talk about the stripper. Oh. So front row, we're talking to the adult dancer. And everyone's like, get her up, get her up. And I don't generally like doing that because they're on their night off. I don't want to make them strip. It's just a bit. Yeah. It's not as funny as you think it's going to be. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, Shh, what strip club do you work at? And she said, uh, like, Centerfolds or one of those ones. Yeah. Showgirls. Cheeky cheers. And I go, fuck, let's look up the reviews from yeah. that strip club. <laughs> oh, yeah. A couple of minutes later, Tom runs out. Big smile on his face, holding his phone. He goes, "Read this one." I'm like in those like action films where they cut to the like fat guy on a computer. That's me <laughs> backstage, and I'm just like hacking. Mm. And I'm like the tech guy. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> and then you, you're trying to get me on comms, but it yeah. was down, so you have like, to run. Frenchie, like, oh, I've got fuck. a good one. I'll bring it to him. Um, and straight up from the first line, I just started fucking pissing. I'm like, oh my goodness. So you go on there one. I went on the one star review from the strip club. <laughs> uh, Oliver a year ago wrote this. Um, was receiving a dance from a lady here, and she diarrheaed all over my <laughs> jeans. As soon as I read that, I'm like, i got to get this to Frenchie. I'm crying. I'm crying because I'm picturing, is it her? Is it someone else? She starts trying to yell something, and I'm like, shut up. I don't want to hear it. I had a feeling no like spoilers. she was yelling. No, no spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. And I read on, and I'm like, okay, but I think this may be made up, but we'll let you make your own decision. She diarrheaed over my jeans. She also told me she was 12 (laughs) and being forced into it by child labor. Other than that, I had a grand time. (laughs) Wait for it. There's one more line, which is the The cherry (laughs) cherry on the top, if you will. They were also very accommodating to my Down syndrome needs and wheelchair access. They're out here diarrheaing. 
Is that a word? <laughs> Diarrhearing. So this Down poor syndrome. poor Down syndrome wheelchair bound men. If you take this like it's a serious review, it is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever read. This poor Down syndrome man called Oliver comes in in a wheelchair. Mm. <laughs> and I think Hazel or Ferrari. Ooh. I guess it would be more maybe like Chocolat. A strip. Yes, That's why she's yes, called that. Yes. Chocolat's giving him a lap An dance. An Amber Heard kind of vibe. Mm. Diarrhea too. Oof. Because you can't plan it. That's not a party trick. That's a, oh, my bad. Yeah. That's a finishing move for sure. Um, <laughs> so the, the adult dancer we met <laughs> claimed it was a made up review. Yeah. But I think we I like that truth. idea. We should do more, um, maybe instead of Tinder one week, we should do strip club reviews or brothel reviews. One star reviews. Mm -hmm. One star reviews on the ones. podcast. Right, yeah. right, I love that, that every down. brothel had like every everything, not just brothels, everywhere has oh, reviews. Yeah. Everywhere has people complaining. No matter where you go. Yeah. 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 So rubbing tugs. Yeah. Too much tug and not enough rubbing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make it even. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's funny, man. I, I went to get a normal massage. Okay, I here we go. Say. Okay. Do you get massages off blokes? I don't get massages. Ah, but would yeah. you? Off a bloke, I'd prefer a woman. Mm. But sometimes your head's in that hole and you're just judging by the feet. And sometimes <laughs> the feet are quite masculine and you're not sure. <laughs> Too much? Yeah, but you see them before they start, don't you? No, nah, they put my head in that thing. They're like, don't <laughs> look. <laughs> Well, I, for physio, I don't mind if it's a, it's a guy or a girl because you get rubs there. Oh, don't physio care. is a bit different. Yeah, yeah, massage. I'm trying to relax. I can't mass uh, relax with man hands. Mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah, especially if they're more masculine than mine. Now I'm feeling self conscious too. Calloused and shit. Oh yeah, they got trady, trady hands, yeah. <laughs> or even just too big. And I've got small biceps, and mm. they're just they're going around them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got sh sh yeah. little legs. The whole hand's going around my thigh. I'm like, yeah. I don't feel good about this. <laughs> yeah. So I went to get a mass. We had time to kill on Sunday. I went to get a massage, and I was like, you had to ring the bell at the mall one. I'm like, there should be someone there. I ring the bell, mm. and the curtain <laughs> opens, and it's this, it's this sweaty Asian man looking like a computer technician just working. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll be there soon. I'm like, I don't think I want you, bro. Yeah. Another time I went to Mrs., mm. she asked for two uh, female masseuses. I'm not sure if I've said this story on the pod. No, but no. Um, her female one comes in. Cool. My female one comes in. Uh, cool. I'm like, that's quite a tall female. Quite uh, quite big hands and feet. Mm. It's 2023. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying with this though? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's a nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Depends if you like the massage firm as well. If you know oh, what I'm it saying. was firm. <laughs> <laughs> it was firm. I could feel it against my top of my head, bro. Something was firm. Frenchie. Bro. And then when she straddled me, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, in Thailand, I never get massages. I remember I was in Thailand and I got one, and they gave you like underpants to wear. <laughs> Same one oh. as Frenchie. <laughs> no yeah, big. yeah, yeah. They do that in Bali too. <laughs> yeah, like these weird disposable underpants that kind of look like a little fishing net. Yes, and it looked yes. like we went, <laughs> looked like we went fishing for prawns and we mm. caught one. Mm. <laughs> I let me just wear my own underwear. Yeah. I don't know what these are doing. I try to make them not see through because mm. I'm not a male stripper. Oh, but by coming in. These them. ones were see through. Oh, coming in. Oh, yeah. sorry, mate. I thought you meant you try to make the fishnet ones <laughs> not see through by, oh, yeah, by gotcha, the sort of joining, gotcha. joining, joining the, the gaps, joining yeah. the nets, as we say. All right. I'm um, so vivid. Actually, we've got one more follow oh, up yep. to that. Yep. Um, she was at the show. I did talk to her. I'd actually said me forgot. And then when she started going, oh, I did a TikTok about you and all the whole crowd's going, oh, I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. Yep. Um, follow up. She was at the show. Then she posted this the next day. Oh, hell yeah. Time to address the elephant in the room. If you're at Frenchie's show last night in Christchurch, you know that I did embarrass myself a lot. And I have to follow through of a promise that I put out on TikTok. Oh, no. That promises I will get his face tattooed somewhere on my body if he talks to me during the show. And it happened. So, I need you to be patient with me. Because if I'm going to get someone's face tattooed on my body, it's going to be done professionally. Okay? <laughs> I am so. getting it done. <laughs> but I'm not getting it done fast. If Was you your cell mate going to do it? <laughs> You have to book him. Mom. And it's pricey. And right now I'm a little so, bit broke. 
but I am saving. Get the tattoo and actually, gun. Tomorrow, I am going in to see the tattoo artist who is going to tattoo Frenchie's face on my body. We should do a GoFundMe for it. I'm mad about that. Yeah, I think but this was posted it is a day going ago. going to happen. It's just not going to happen quickly. What I was saying during the show is the funniest is like, I was like, where are you going to get it? She goes, probably the butt. Mm. I go, yeah, for you, funny to get you my face on it. there. Yeah. Someone's doing doggy style on mm. you. They're looking up at me yeah. like a fucking Bogan Steve-O. Yeah. <laughs> You're like watching. They everything. aim to the come for me, maybe. Oh, yeah. I was also thinking, do you reckon she'll get cartoon Frenchie or it'll mm. be like one of those memorial tattoos? Oh, go cartoon. Like, like a real black we do and not white self-portress. We do not fun. want black and white. Go like a caricature. Ooh, like yeah. an anime version? Anime would be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go. Anim- I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, I'm worried either way. I do like an outline or something. We had one, actually, on Saturday night, there was these two at the show, they come in um, when we're at the the bar upstairs, mm. and like, Frenchie, whatever, so my missus uh, thigh, I was like, sick. He goes, I'm going to go home and tattoo it now with my tattoo gun. Like, okay, and he did. <laughs> wow. She also had Little Miss Naughty on there. Wow. Yeah. Little Miss Naughty. Fuck I guess yeah, bro, it is naughty bro, to get well, a tattoo it and Tattoos are... Those sort of tattoos are in style now because we're talking about this at tour. Like, why are so many more people getting out tattoos of our signatures and stuff? <laughs> so it's because those sort of little, whatever those little, abstract home job home job tattoos home job, are, yeah. are fashionable now. So, dude, that's like a scary purchase. If someone in your share house buys a tattoo gun, has that happened? Yeah, I First feel like that is so in, risky. I woke up to just the sound of like the tattoo gun <gasps> on, on you. No, oh, no. Is that why your eyebrows are so thick? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a rogue choice I knew it. You get like the mascara yeah. You know how some women do that You get drunk and think that's a good idea <laughs> I'm going to get my hairline Just for some reason Like kind of like yes. more of a Dracula po- <laughs> Just like a big yeah. peak No? Okay. So you, did you get any tattoos with it? I did get one under my foot But it, I did foot. it because it rubbed off oh, Which yeah. is the wear and tear Did that, that hurt like shit? Your feet are so sensitive Nah it was alright hmm. Tough bad. guy but it must He doesn't been, have like, sensitive feet <laughs> he doesn't, bro. How you were with come me. On, you know this. He was he was asleep on two, and we both licked the bottom of his feet, <laughs> and he think, didn't wake up. You think I was asleep? <laughs> he was like, oh, it was us. like a massage with Thomas just looking us. at his feet. <laughs> got us. That's funny. Um, moving on, I've got a funny story for you guys. Uh, Frenchie might have heard some of it. Um, the other week, uh, we were talking about this. Was when we were in Perth, I think, mm. somewhere around there. We were talking about uh, public makeouts, and I brought up that uh, Matt O'Kine, I once saw him making out on the street in broad daylight. Yes, on Oxford Street, yes. No, but okay. I didn't think anyone listened to our podcast, but apparently it got back to them. <laughs> so we've got a clip of them listening to us talking shit about them. Okay, here's the original clip with them for listening to it. Dude, random, unnecessary comment from me. Huh? Walking down the street in Sydney, see this guy just f***ing necking on with this woman <laughs> in the middle of the path. Looks up at me. It's Matt O'Kine. <laughs> no, it's not. And he gives me eye contact. And like, oh. I was like, what the f***? Was he in the night or day? Day. Day! Day! True story. True story. It was f***ing weird. I, it's burnt into my mind because it was so in the day. It was so macking on. We so made... Eye yeah, that's contact. a Mr. Boat. See, now you're never forgetting that. Yeah. The eye contact in the makeout's good, though. All right. Now, I've heard some tall tales in my time, but I, I need to find a few more facts about this because I'm not saying it didn't happen. All right, but I need to... Before I'm even willing to say, yeah, that was me, I need to find out some, some facts first. So that was them talking about it and they, they watched it, discussed it and then they got in contact with us mm. and said, can you guys come on the podcast? Well, can whoever saw it? So I went on, just they called me up and I had to explain what I saw, give them some more details. I think that's the funniest because we have done this for what, 250 episodes. We never think anyone we talk about No one's ever called listen. us out yeah. on our facts, that's for we sure. We have a snitch in the ranks, firstly. <laughs> Secondly, hilarious. Hilarious. Hilarious, yeah. So Tom had to go on the podcast. 
Yeah. Awesome. And no, I've I'm, never met them, by the way, so I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, like, you, you didn't think know you if you were in trouble or yeah. it was funny. Yeah. Or like, they're comedians, but still, like, you, yeah. never, you never know. Also, how about the irony that we do fake news every week and this then the was one true. real true story. And I think that's what I, they thought. I think they thought they might have done a bit of research and realized we do fake news, but this was true, <laughs> but when they interviewed me, I couldn't remember. It was so long ago, so I might, might have started embellishing a little bit. <laughs> now, we've got, Let's... we've got Tom Armstrong on the phone here. <laughs> Tom and Frenchie. From Tom and Frenchie. Tom, you're the, you're the person who said this happened. Can, can you give me a few more details about what you reckon happened here? Yeah, absolutely, and I don't appreciate being told that I might have made it up. But the timeline is a little blurry, okay? So okay. Ooh, okay. I can I can tell you almost where it was. It was uh on Pitt Street near World Square, mm-hmm. around like Macchiato. There's like a restaurant there. I feel like it was around there. It was quite a while ago, all right? Very talking, apt it could name. Be between five and ten years, I have no idea. <laughs> five for and who's, ten years. For someone who's <laughs> macking on. Okay, give me give me an exact give me as can you pl- can you pinpoint Around about what, you know, what people doing Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to say I was doing Gangnam Style, but I can't confirm. Okay, right. maybe Is I was it... Gangnam Styling down the street, mm. and um, you were in the middle of the path. You like the footpath in the middle of Sydney. Yeah, it was a busy street. You were really going for it. <laughs> oh, what? No, but look, oh, hey, look, I got to tell you now, Tom. I very rarely, really go for it. Okay, so this is I, I, I'm denying this so far. So World Square, let me figure out. Oh yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yep. okay, I know the restaurant. Mm, yep. Do you so... have a description uh, of uh, the 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 other person involved in this? Absolutely not. But mm. I can say that she was shorter because shorter than you because it kind of looked like a. Brontosaurus feasting on like a smaller tree. It's just a lot of neck. Okay. All right. No. All right. So I'm picturing like when Sam Neill in Jurassic Park, by the way, first sees the dinosaurs. It's like head is up over a tree and is like bending down (sighs) with a very wide open mouth. Yes. Do we know? Sort of like um. How if you play one of those claw machines and the claw just sort of like descends <laughs> almost vertically down to a small I think I was also, toy. Yeah, I was carrying a drink and it had the ripples in it like in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I was like, something's coming. <laughs> so, so wait, do, okay, so it was daytime. Do you know, can you think yes. of whether it was a weekend or, you know, do you know what, mm. what you were doing? I think it was a weekday. I'm going to say late afternoon. It was definitely light, though. Too light. I saw everything. Did I? <laughs> I you reckon I looked at you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you looked at me like, you know when you go bowling and someone does a strike and they turn around to kind of a <laughs> Come on, Tom. <laughs> Dude, it was that kind of confidence. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did Matt then do a finger gun point at you, pull his thumb down like a trigger and then blow the smoke off the end of his finger? I think he might have. No, no. I think okay, he might. tell me this. Well, actually, I'm just saying, please, please tell me there was no wink. Oh, it could have been a blink, but it was only one eye. <laughs> a one-eyed blink. Could have been. All right, That's all right. But the, the problem is, is we I don't yet have the evidence of mm. like something Matt would like, or no, only the only a person there at the time would have known. Like, yeah. was there a certain tongue swell movement that only Matt O'Kind does when he makes out with someone? Because his eyes were so locked in on me, it kind of took every other detail out and we really had a moment. <laughs> you almost felt like you were the one I was kissing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, wait, 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 wait. And you're sure? You're sure positive. it was me? Absolutely positive. Okay. Now, the only other thing we should bring up here. Now, Matt has unfortunately in the past received private Facebook messages from people apologising for, you know, costing him at a, state, a train station. And calling him Nazim Hussein, mm-hmm. and is, <laughs> someone didn't actually do that either. He, they probably got him confused with someone else as well. Yes. So, the person there wasn't walking out of where they filmed the project or anything. <laughs> there wasn't. Are you sure that we're it's Matt O'Kine we're talking about here? I'd like to say it was around the time the other guy came out mm-hmm. and he was probably next to a billboard of himself. It was so clear. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's no mistake. All in right. Here. All right. Look. If we can place this to sometime mm. around your 2016s, mm-hmm. 
I don't know what I would have been doing at World Square, but it's not far from the ABC. It's not. It's Sydney. not. And the you know the the um the relationship that I was in was a very was a new one. Mm. It was a lot. Loss of passion. Okay, let's just say that. So I will... I'm going to leave this as a, a draw. Can a we draw. say that this is, uh, uh, you know, undecided, unclarified? Or what, Team Alex, what are you on? I, th- I think we need to find the other person in the kiss to confirm. I, I really don't do know that. who it would be. I mean, other than Belinda. Mm. If it was if it was around about the other guy time, then it would have been Belinda. Mm. Do you remember if she had blonde or brown hair? I don't know, man. I just remember those piercing eyes. <laughs> 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 All right, look. Max, I can't even yeah, remember being there. around there. Mm. Oh, you do call. Oh, wow. And explaining it as well. It's very Ooh. kind of you right, bringing out on your incredible pod. Stop it. Oh, you'll just have to wait and see. I think um, it, you bro. better. Stop. You don't want the yeah, ending, no. no, bro. Because it leads into the fake news. Don't worry. Yeah, don't we'll, worry. We'll say it. So, at the end of that call, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of that call, they were saying, "Let us know if you get any dirt on Alex Dyson." Mm. So later in the episode, we might reveal some dirt we've uncovered on Alex Dyson. Definite dirt, mm. not part of a segment. Definitely Definite not true made up. fact story. Oh yeah, but that one was true. That was hundred um, percent. Uh, you because you've told me that many times. Yeah, many times. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and say it on the podcast. It won't get back to me. No. It instantly got back to me. So well, you do have to be I'll, careful. I will say two things. Tommy, yes. you crushed that uh, interview. You should go on other podcasts more often. Thank you. That was incredible. Uh, I second, think at the end I butchered his name. I was like, thank you, Matt and El Andrew. No, I didn't. I said something <laughs> weird. Well, yeah, I was going to say, secondly, shout out Matt and Alex. Yeah, Fucking legends. Having they were a good, good laugh with it, as yeah. comedians should. Yeah. Um, I believe they have a it's podcast too. If you go through all of our episodes a couple of times, mm-hmm. um, backwards and forwards, and, and then eventually you need a new one. I'm Check sure it out. is very good Check too. Check it out. What are we up to? Great question. Um, I think we're up to the unfiltered moment of the week. Oh! Ooh, yeah, so... It's time for the Unfiltered Moment of the Week, brought to you by Filter Brewing, makers of the finest, most unfiltered brews in town. Delicious. Yum, yum, seductive oh, yum. beer. That's an extra pale ale I'm having, and it's extra good. Oh, yeah, that is good. Um, so we asked people to send in an unfiltered moment, so it could be just something you said that you regret, something you did that you regret, and if you send us in a message, you can come to our live podcast, but it's next week, so you're probably too late. But we'll see. We do need some more. <laughs> we do need some more to play on the actual live episode, but we might get them from the crowd. Actually, that you, might be better. You can come to our live podcast, 2025. Yeah, you can come next time. But anyway, um, join us on Patreon anyway if you want to come along because it's going to be a hell of a time. Patreon.com/slash Tom and Frenchy. <laughs> Woohoo! So this week's unfiltered moment is from Bay Maze. Uh, Bailey May, and I'll play it. Bay May. Bay Blades. Bay Blades. Hey, guys. So my story for the unfiltered moment is I was at a wedding for one of my friends. And I was on a table with people I know but not too well. And they were all just having a laugh, whatever. We're all joking. And I've probably had a few too many. And someone goes, oh, you know my sister? Uh, yeah, 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 I know your sister. Yeah, she's got some needs, doesn't she? And I somehow blurted out, yeah, special needs. <laughs> Which, ha, 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 funny laugh. No. But it turns out his sister did have special needs and everyone just stopped and stared at me <laughs> and I felt like a fucking jackass the rest of the night. But, yeah, it was all right. We ended up laughing together, me and the guy. But... Yeah, that's my moment. Thanks. <laughs> Bro, what did you think he meant? <laughs> no one's not a... Like, what do you mean she has needs? Like, she has to eat, she has to drink. I think he's trying to... And he's just like, yeah, yeah special needs. Special <laughs> needs. Needs to get his dirk. Needs an extra chromosome. I mean, one less. <laughs> what the fuck you mean? That's very uh, clear that, that he's going somewhere with that sentence. I find weddings extremely dangerous because that is where the alcohol is free. You're awkward. You're sitting with other people at a table. You start punishing that red wine mm. like it's done something wrong. Mm. And then you're with people who don't know you, wouldn't sit with you normally, 
and you're just spitting banter. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it is dangerous. It's, it's like a boss at a Christmas party. You're like, yes. okay, who wants it? It's time for an edgy joke. Yeah. I think they're ready. It's, let's see yeah. if this table's going to be fun or not. Just dipping oh, the toe in. Man. Just dipping the toe in. <laughs> I've recently experienced that, but oh, not yes. at a wedding. I would say one up that at a wake. Oh, <laughs> oh Alex. Wow. Wake me up. Oh. <laughs> wake me up inside. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? <laughs> Nothing bad, but just like same thing. You're just with people. Tensions are like kind of there. You're you're drinking at the wake. It's open bar. Mm. It's just like. What did you say? It's just telling jokes with this old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were racist. Go, you, they do we'll the racist your, ones. We'll be at your wake oh. soon. Eh? <laughs> I remember I was at a mate's wedding and there were all these people who worked at Stan, probably high up in Stan, Oh yeah, which is kind of the industry we'd like to get into TV, mm. but we get given this dessert. <laughs> I started spitting banter about how it looked like it was covered in cum mm. for ages. I was mm. really drunk mm. and they were, oh, were not, not on board. On kind of grossed out to be mm. fair and fair enough. And then I woke up and I was like, oh, that Stan deal is not going through, is it? <laughs> Fuck, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> When um Lane, I saw uh, Lane Saint Lane. Yep. Uh, he did this. He did this gig in um, <coughs> Marrickville or somewhere. Yeah. As part of Vivid, and it was just how it happened. It was near Triple J's, where they oh, have drinks. No, this was at the Lord Gladstone. Lord Gladstone. Yes, we <laughs> yes, may have told one. this story on the podcast. I'm not sure. That's all right. It, it just so great. happened where they were having drinks, and Lane was there. And so everyone with Triple J was having drinks. He's doing this awkward show for like. Seven people. <laughs> it feels out a bit because ten people from Triple J, the station he'd love to be oh, on, come in. Yep. And he he says he knew they were there and he was doing the intro for them, but we're not sure. He starts talking about how this song got so many plays and so many nominations for Triple J, Hottest 100, and... It didn't get in the, even the top 200, fuck the dogs, that sort of stuff. Oh, <laughs> no, literally the worst I had to leave the room, bro. Oh, dude. He's like, no, no, no. And then afterwards, I'm like, bro, you know the head of Triple J programming was in there? He's like, yeah, it was all bands. So I was looking at him. It was bands. I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. With weddings, I find like when I'm on the table, it's such a tricky one because if I even got one person who's seen the Frenchie videos mm. – yeah, yeah gotta, I'm going full yeah. Frenchie. Let's go, baby. Full throttle. Because <laughs> it'll be one lad. Mrs. hasn't seen it. Mrs. Oh, no. Friends haven't oh, seen no. it. The grandma. Other blokes, a best behavior. Yeah. They don't even want to get down. Mm. I'll start fucking dipping bread in my wine and stuff. Mm, I'll I do early shoeys. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start like racking up. Not racking up, but like <laughs> yeah. fun stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Doing fun stuff. Like, let's put our keys in the bowl sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you start putting, like, the, the bride's keys in the bowl and stuff. Oh, all that sort yeah. of... So you get it. Yeah. It's just bands. Yeah, it's so awkward, man. Then you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, God, I'm glad I don't actually know those people. Yeah. So it's not the worst, actually. That's why you only want to go to weddings of people you don't really know. That's right. Mm. <laughs> okay, that was our unfiltered moment of the week, guys. <laughs> next week is going to be fun. It's going to be cool to listen to as well because we are literally taking this podcast set up to a brewery, fucking crowd watching, Final, a laugh. Finally going to be out at a pub where God intended podcast to be mm. having a few drinks. And we the good thing about us doing a live show is we don't edit this podcast. Mm. Like It goes out like it is, but every other podcast you listen to probably edit. Other thing, <laughs> you're a lot funnier after a few drinks. I'm a lot oh, less yeah. funny. Yeah, you slur a bit more. Yeah. You say slurs. No. <laughs> you slur, you slur <laughs> no, words. No, slur words. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you have no proof. But yeah, I'd say I'm I'm less funny. Nah, I don't know. I think I think you're you got this nice energy. Yeah. Alex, I'm not sure yet. We'll find out on the on... Actually <laughs> Alex is whale funny, I remember. Oh, he, we've seen him hung over, possibly still drunk, and it no, was pretty funny. No, we've seen him still drunk when he came in on that Monday. Oh yeah, where he'd been at the his and, drinking team. And he started talking about Elmo having a gangbang with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> oh yeah. Tickle me, Kim. <laughs> Well, that was funny, actually. All right, we got some good news stories this week. I'll let Alex bring it in. Yep, all right. The first one I've got here is Australian sex workers go to schoolies week to film content with 18-year-old virgins. <laughs> I see what they're doing, to be honest. What? You know what they're doing? They're doing that like... Uh, Tell me. Kind of like Mrs. Robinson thing. Okay. Like an 18-year-old... Wait, wait, wait. 
So it's OnlyFans models, right? But it's you got to you got to say it's females. We yes. didn't know that from the from the title. Well, you should have written a better title. Mm, well, I'm saying okay. So back up a little bit. So I it's think we only assumed. female sex workers. How many male sex workers are out there? Oh, we don't get paid as well, but we're there. <laughs> <laughs> Equal pay for us. <laughs> there's no fucking. There's no marches. There's no Twitter. Bands for the male sex There's no audience industry. for it. But. Well, I'm saying we're still equal pay, okay? So, yeah, it's female fucking OnlyFans yeah. workers. Um, they're trying to just get clicks because that's a good title. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking from a marketing perspective, it's like fresh 18-year-old schoolie rails, 30-year-old OnlyFans model. I don't think a fresh 18-year-old little boy is railing anything. Oh, no, she's getting railed. But Yeah, well, yeah. I don't think, yeah. no. We're Couple, saying, two pumps. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. yes, we're okay. saying. Fresh 18-year-old schoolies has the greatest 13 seconds of his life <laughs> yeah. and then cries from the shame. All right, let's hear more about this story. Yeah, so a group of adult performers and escorts have a promised... Group. A group. That Wait, I feel intense. like they need a better v- uh, a, v- term a for a gaggle? group of and a like, yeah, and A you've murder? Got escorts and performers, so I think like more like jugglers who circus. are fucking... Yeah, I think a, circus. A jugglers. A juggling what masturbator. A, um, <laughs> a pod? <laughs> a pod. A flock? Keeps, keeps his apples going while jerking off and staying hard. That's pretty cool. <laughs> But I'm saying, what do you call a group of escorts? Uh, a flock? Mm, I want to say gaggle. Gaggle, yes. okay. Gaggle. I don't gag. A guckle. A guckle. A guckle. <laughs> gluck gluck. A gluckle. A gluckle, yeah, because yeah. I got that gluck gluck. Yeah, okay, we got there. Um, of uh, do, it in, do it from the a start. A gaggle of adult performers <laughs> and escorts have promised to sleep with dozens of young men <laughs> aged <laughs> over 18, including virgins. The explicit encounters will be recorded and made available to online paying subscribers. That's so dangerous, though, for these kids. Because that's what they are. 18, you're dumb as fuck. Mm. And you have a few fucking vodka cruisers. You'll mm. just be happy to have female attention. But then this video of you is going to be on the internet forever. Yeah, that's you, the concern. The video. boys g and you up, and you don't oh, get dude. you don't get final cut. Yeah, you don't get final cut. Oh no! Hey, if I put in a bad performance, or I, you can know, you slow it down so it looks like I last longer? Can you use a fish eye so it looks like I'm bigger? No, yeah. no, 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 none of that. That's scary. I think it. Like, how old are the the escorts? Uh, I think they're ranging from like twenty one to twenty four. Fuck, Could be worse. Saying that though, that's kind of a, doing a good yeah. deed. Yeah. yeah. In saying that, mm. in saying that, they're doing the Lord's work. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's completely altruistic. Although some, there are some <laughs> DMs here. Depends how if they're intoxicated. If they're fucking up. the ugly ones, then it's altruistic. Oh, okay. No, because there's a lot of ugly <laughs> blokes like me. You went to schoolies. Oh yeah. And then there's all these good looking. Oh, blokes. they're already fucking those dudes. Yeah, exactly. But mm. it's like if they're Really doing the Lord's work, do you know what I mean? They should yeah. be going. Because ones... me, me and Frenchie were at school. He's just sitting on the spa jets. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most action we got. <laughs> That's such a visual. Oh wow! Someone turned that into a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gluck gluck. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> gluck gluck. I don't think that's what the gluck gluck is. <laughs> Uh, Kay, Kay Manuel, one of the uh, sex workers, shared her DMs, uh, and one lad wrote, "Might have to hook myself and the lads up. I know the work bros would be keen. Pretty common subject at Smoko." Wow, he's got a job. I thought there was school. He's not just tradies in town. No, well, they can drop out and then go on schoolies because they technically would be on that schoolies. Wow. So a lot of them like are apprentices for a couple of years. And then they're hit 18 and they're like, I'm going on schoolies. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, I think if anyone can handle it, it's it's a tradie. They'd like to have that claim on the work site. Oh, yeah. I'm more worried for the, the, the bookworm. Oh, yeah. The one who did well in science. The you know Jim I mean? from American Pie kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jim. Oh, Jim would be great content. Mm. And I, th- there's, they were saying they earn on OnlyFans up to like 30000 you know, a week or a month. Um, I don't Good think this. They said they wouldn't give any of the male performers <laughs> uh, any a cut. They're not really performers. Do you think that's a fair trade? They? Nah, they don't deserve a cut. Nah, I think maybe a six pack of Woodies or something. Yeah, I a goon that's fair. sack. I think. Yep. Yep. I think. Um, what? How much? I kind of want it. 
I want to see. Oh, you want to see? I thought you wanted to join. I wanted to have a storyline. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. If they did schoolies as the storyline, mm. like you got some plot potential. But there. I'm saying as long as the boys get a chance to act. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you doing here? So, like, I don't know what role they. Big I think sister, doing. what are you doing Not at school? Big sister, yeah. bro. I like his step. Mom. Like step, step, you're so right. You, what are you doing? Biological sister, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep our blood pure. <laughs> It's good. Hobart schoolies is the best. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to go to the mainland, yeah. do we? Um, but yeah, I think I think you make a good point. They should give him a car. They should give him a little something, something. At least yeah. pay him per, by the hour. I think it's about time women got their back in the porn industry. Men have been men don't get a lot a in the porn. Think industry. of fucking. Um, Girls Gone Wild. They were fucking messing up schoolies kind of vibes back in the day. Mm, Getting right. chicks to get their tits out and stuff and taking advantage. It's about time we got some fucking... That's some boys going wild. Some boys going wild. Boys going wild. Let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Quality. Those videos, I don't. I haven't seen them. I've only seen the highlights, but <laughs> yep. it was, it was, I always just like... On like, a bus for a t-shirt. Show or whatever for a t-shirt. For a t-shirt. Did they ever do it? Show, show, show the willy. Willy. And show the, boy, the willy for like some underpants. Willy, no, willy. So. No. No, they weren't interested. <sighs> Not the ones I was watching. Yeah, Maybe there's a spin-off. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Boys Gone Wild on, on Gold Coast Schoolies. Yeah. yeah that's Let's great. Stay tuned. We'll premiere it here <laughs> at the Cup <laughs> of I love the hustle. Only fans oh, if any hustle, lads, don't they? If any lads cash that check, let us know. Come tell us what it was like. <laughs> yeah, anyone listening, I know we've got if a few. If you're on schoolies, got a few, if you've got a mate who did the deed... Yes, we would love in to that hear situation, first not hand. just in general. We don't want everyone who's been late <laughs> fucking sending at school, us this. At school, yeah, we feel bad enough already. Unless it's the same spa we were in, then we can yeah, share yeah, stories. Hell yeah. Is old Bessie still going? Benny and the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie and the Jets. All right. Um, I got another one here for you. Uh, we've got a little head to head of the most cooked Docking. storylines from Neighbours and Home and Away. Oh, hell oh yeah. yes. Because we always see these articles pop up, like the craziest yeah. storylines from Neighbours. And they're, they've they been around for a long time and they write a lot of episodes and they get desperate. That's the best part is because you don't think they were around before cancel culture. Oh, yeah. Before uh, people, b- before racism existed. <laughs> No, no, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do I say this? They, you could... you get away with some you shit. you could get away with some shit. Yeah. That we look on there going, what the fuck? Yeah. And so there's some storylines from the 80s, 70s, yeah. 90s that... And you know how there was the golden age of television? Before that, there was the foil age. Like, you know, <laughs> like just foil age. not even a metal. Yeah. Just real shit TV. Yeah. And this is some of that. This is from the foil age. <laughs> yeah. Did you, have you guys watched Neighbours and Home and Away? I worked on Home and Away, but I was their digital video producer, so I was like backstage filming shit. Wow. And it's pretty crazy how it works, but I think it's come a long way since these stories. Everyone's watched a bit of Neighbours. My family was more of a Home and Away family than a Neighbours family. I feel like families skew in Australia one way or the other. You're a Neighbours family? I've watched Neighbours. Yeah. Then they put their blinds down. Wait, what's that about? Actual neighbours in the street. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> I, like that. I thought it was like a quote from neighbours. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? I was too that in was the zone. Not an obvious, that nah, was a very right. obvious you're joke. Right. Um, but yeah, I watched it growing up because it was that perfect pocket between the Simpsons. Yeah. Simpsons, 6pm, neighbours. And Simpsons, you had sisters, I had a sister. I had so sisters. I was like, oh, bro, I used to put on everything and yeah. be like, oh, no, I got sisters. Yeah. That's why I'm watching Hilary Duff. Oh, yeah, I was watching oh, Hilary yeah. Duff. Oh, bro. Oh, dude. She's a goddess. Um, All right, so this first girl? one is Amanda Bynes too. Uh, mm, from now. Neighbours. Um, Zeke goes missing and is kidnapped by a man who believes he's his dead son. So this wow. is the one where Zeke goes missing on a wild rafting trip, then resurfaces with amnesia. Oh, shit. With Phil Andrews, who then thinks Zeke is his dead son. That's creepy as fuck. That's like a horror film. Yeah. Okay. Well, so it's that verse, a Home and Away story. Home and Away. Or? Heath has sex with Bianca and then has sex with her virginal sister. Oh, virginal. I think we just covered that story, didn't we? So <laughs> Baxton <laughs> took April's virginity after his fling with Bianca Scott. Oh, um, this is, these are common. double dipping. No, nah, these are pretty common storylines. In what? Well, the first one's not, but the, the second <laughs> one is. That happens. People have sex, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I've heard about it. 
Yeah. <laughs> on TV through the sisters? Yeah. It's pretty what do you wild. Mean? Just what maybe do you on mean? the TV shows that you've been it's watching. Half the crowd work I do. <laughs> It's like they're like, oh no, now he hooked up my sister. Yeah. Oh, true. Do you they, know what I mean? Do they use the word? They don't use the word virginal. virginal. It's all, that's yeah. the killer. Yeah, virginal. I may have just added that one in. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, right which is to, more cooked? The, um, the, the, the amnesia. Whenever you're throwing amnesia. amnesia out there, yeah, you know desperate. you're jumping the shark. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, they've done that a few times in Neighbours. <laughs> I love that. Um, mm. Do you know where j- jumping the shark comes from? Originates. Yeah. Happy days. Happy the days. Jumps the shark on a, a jet ski or something, right? I yeah. He's water skiing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and he says that to the shark. Goes hey. And then the shark does it back. Yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> All right. The next one from and they Neighbours. Never referenced it again. Julie accuses her Chinese neighbours of eating her dog. <laughs> This is true. We are not making this I'll up, I'll watch by the, the way. first minute of this. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Julie accuses the Chinese <laughs> neighbours of eating her dog after a neighbour says that Lim, the limbs next door had a oh, barbecue. No, the limbs. And uh, that it smelt like something he couldn't recognise. Oh, shit. Nosy neighbour. What sort of dog was it? I don't know. Well, we I don't think they actually... Oh. I'm sure it was just like racism, right? They didn't... Yeah. Like, did the dog go missing? Did they find yeah. the dog? Yeah, I think they found the dog. Oh, phew. I'm glad the dog's okay. Yeah. That's a happy They were cooking ending. the cat. Hey! <laughs> got him. And then what's the contrast? Uh, home and Away. Or? When a brain tumor caused John to become a serial arsonist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think the other one could yet beat yeah, him, but there we go. that's pretty good. <laughs> so wow. apparently John Palmer walked around Summer Bay in a black raincoat and lit dangerous fl- fires. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Which caused one of the can- one of the uh, characters to get contract terminal cancer. Wait, the fire yeah. gave him cancer. Fuck, How does dude. that work? I guess the lungs. Just from smoke. Yeah, wow. Lung cancer. Fuck. RIP. Did it tr- That's that's another unnecessary step oh, there. I think you just that need one's to ridiculous. Stick with, yeah. stick with the firing thing. Maybe it burnt down their favorite shed. Mm. Do that. I mean, you know what I mean? still think the dog one's worse. I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> no, the dog bro. One. You reckon brain a tumor? brain tumor made him an arsonist? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, we'll agree. what are you talking we'll about? Agree. And I feel, and he's wearing this black <laughs> the coat, black bro. trench coat thing, really. And then no one creepier. knows it's him. It's like it's obviously the kind of the beach in the black <laughs> trench coat with the, with the brain tumor. <laughs> and it's not raining because he's lying to fucking fire. It's obviously not raining. Homeboy's just giving people cancer. He's like, <laughs> yeah, and, crazy. That, and that gave him cancer, bro. That's wow. easily the most okay. cooked one. No, Whereas right. I can see neighbors is actually kind of for that era. That's actually probably a pretty common storyline. Yeah. Like, I feel like there was a, a year in the 80s or 90s where, like, suburban Aussie families were pretty racist whenever anyone would move in. Yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I'm saying that's pretty... So what's that? Is that one... One for neighbours, one for home okay. and one. Yeah. Okay, so this is the next group. Neighbours. Susan gets amnesia and thinks she's 16. <laughs> <laughs> thinks she's 16. Oh. Oh. 16 again. I've seen that movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Susan Kennedy. <laughs> Susan Kennedy slips on some spilt milk. Oh no! <laughs> and oh. wakes up thinking she's a 16 year old self. This means she's revolted by her husband, Carl, <laughs> who she has just patched up things with after his affair with Sarah B. Oh, <laughs> wow. Get your wrinkly balls <laughs> away from me. Pedo. <laughs> you you pedo. fucking pedo. I'm 16. I'm, I'm a, a rough 16. I'm your <laughs> husband, Dr. Carl. That is right. That's crazy. I love the writer's room for that. Yeah. I love it. Can we give someone amnesia again? That's why they put up those wet signs in supermarkets because you can get fucking amnesia. The dude. milk too, bro? That's yeah. slippery. I want, like, Oof. Bro, even that 2%, you can go oh, down. Yeah. yeah. Full cream? Don't even think about oh, it. Oh, so slippery. Bro, don't even. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one is from Home and Away. The telepathic twins weren't weren't actually related. So here's a bit of backstory. <laughs> <laughs> after, getting, after getting trapped in a mine shaft, okay. Kirsty and Jane Sutherland were able to communicate with their minds to escape the sticky situation. But here's where it gets interesting. And one of Home and Away's biggest plot holes, Kirsty and Jade weren't actually related and the hospital staff mixed, their ba- mixed up the babies at birth. Wow. 
Wait, fucking what? So they thought <laughs> they were telepathic, some kind of twin thing. But, but yeah. are they telepathic before the mind thing or it only came through during no. the mind, during the I think the during trauma. the mind, they yeah. were like... Like, like a superhero, started, that started makes sense. I'm, I'm still, still in, I'm still traumatic in. Traumatic situation. But then I guess it's some other storyline. It was revealed. They probably got desperate. They were like, we got this cool twin thing. Actually, not, not twins. twins. That's a good storyline. But now the cave thing makes no fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. Not I think twins. that's what happened. Fucked. Yeah. Okay. So what's they're just more, regular what's witches. More cooked? Telepathic, uh, unfraternal twins. Mm. Un- unrelated well, 16 twins. 16 again milk slippers. <laughs> I think, miss, I want to give this to 16 again milk slipper. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, yeah. I know the character too. Mm. She's, a, she's a kind of like. Jemay. No, not Jemay. I meant <laughs> the one in the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was her name again? Uh, I can't remember. Susan, but I know Susan, Susan Kennedy. Susan. Yeah, she's like kind of, she kind of stayed under, under the radar MILF for like 40 oh, years. Yeah, eh? she slipped in the MILF, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked her face hot. Uh, can we actually? Can we have a quick listen to a scene from um, after she's just become? I don't amnesia? think he's got it ready. Cause I think we. Oh, you it got ready. it. Uh, okay. Oh right, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Slip. <laughs> Susan, are you all right? It's Doctor Carl here. Ew! Get away from me, you gross. Pedo. I'm your. I'm your husband. Are you okay? Oh God, you're not my husband. Don't touch me. Um, Your wrinkly ass fingers. Um, what's sorry? Why are you saying this? We've just reconnected. We've just gone back together. Our marriage was. We're married. Looking, look on oh, your finger. That's not even legal. Get away from me. I'm trying to get milk. <laughs> <laughs> I want some milk too. Isn't that why I'm here? Oh no! I don't want it from the bottle. Police. And <laughs> scene. That's the oh, scene. Wow. Yeah. It was a very disturbing episode. Yeah, quite into yeah. it. What's the next? Okay, here's the. Uh, Last one I got. Um, Neighbours. Cheryl Stark is kidnapped by Ecuadorian rebels. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm, I'm still in this. So Cheryl Stark jets off to Ecuador after she finds out her son, Brett, has been jailed on suspicion of drug smuggling. Okay. Dramatically, she's kidnapped by rebels and her partner, Lou, has to fly over to rescue her. When she returns, it's relieved she actually had a f- an affair with one of her captors and Lou breaks <laughs> off the relationship. Those damn sexy, sexy captors. I love that, that Lou dumps her. <laughs> she's fucking kidnapped. She was doing what she had to do to survive. To survive. And Dude. Lou's like, nah, no, nah, how vows. Would you try to seduce a captor? If oh, you're definitely. Captain? Yeah, I would try to get captured just so I could fuck one of them. Right? Yeah, dude. I would love that. Bit of role play. Oh, yeah. 18 <laughs> year old Ecuadorian rebels. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> On schoolies. On schoolies. On schoolies. <laughs> yeah, they're the hottest ones. <laughs> Do you think the amnesia thing would work if you get kidnapped? Oh, like you're like, give me, your, give, me your, give me your money, gringo. It's like, oh, where am I? I've got amnesia. <laughs> I'm a 13-year-old <laughs> boy from... Yeah. From wherever you don't hate. Brazil. <laughs> I'm definitely not Todo American. Todo bem bonitos. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, no, I've seen this neighbor's episode before. <laughs> <laughs> so many plot holes. <laughs> <You'd have to laughs> really, oh, yeah. they killed him. Killed him. <laughs> Fuck, okay. Fuck. No, it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one's pretty good. And yep. this one is from uh, Home and Away. Sally's imaginary friend Milko ends up being her long-lost <laughs> brother. Wait, her imaginary friend? Milko. So Sally oh, Fletcher shit. was a kid in the 80s Home and Away who had yep. an imaginary friend, Milko. Ugh. Then in the 2000s, they brought him as a, re- as a real person, as a long lost brother. Then Milko ends up, uh, Milko becomes Miles Copeland. Um, and he becomes an al- he has an alcohol problem. <laughs> <laughs> he hangs out with a character called Rabbit, <laughs> who's whimsical and cute until it's revealed that Rabbit is actually his dead daughter, who is oh. his own imaginary friend. Whoa! That... Wait, can everyone see Milko or still just Sally? So she could see him, mm-hmm. and then he appeared as a real person. But can one. everyone else yes. once, once he's see? Revealed, yes, and then can they see Milko's imaginary dead daughter friend? I don't know. No, no. Alex says that's level. That's like Inception, bro. <sighs> you're gonna, you're yeah. gonna need to watch fucking go on forums to understand that episode. Milko. <laughs> Milko, firstly, what a great name. That's a wild name. Friend. He must be very fair-skinned. It must be. Fair-skinned no. blonde man, for sure. No, I think it's a cow. 
Oh. I think she was on the farm and like Milko and it's like a cow in a human, like kind of like um, a Wilfred. Yep. Yep. Mm. That's hot. Milko. Milko. <laughs> Are we in the uh, writer's room hello. for a moment away right now? <laughs> hello, it's Milko. <laughs> what if? <laughs> sounds like it might have been just a drifter who read her journals knowing oh, she shit. had an imaginary friend called Milko. And he comes in going, hey, it's me, Milko. And he knows everything because she wrote it in the journals. Far out. And then any plot hole he can't understand, he's like, oh, that's my imaginary friend. Do you reckon we could get writer's spots on these easily. shows? Yeah. Okay. Fucking easy. Just want to check. So what are we voting for that one? Ecuadorian rebels <sighs> or that's a, that's a big. That's a big one. They're both very hectic storylines. I can see the Ecuadorian rebels one can happening. see it. Because that's kind of what happened with Cassie. Cassie, cocaine Cassie, she's trying oh. to smuggle cocaine from Colombia in, in her headphones. headphones. Yep. She ended up getting locked up. Boyfriend went over for a bit, tried to get her out. Ends up breaking out of her because she's fucking something in prison. True. So that's pretty much happened. All right, so the other one. Yeah, has to be Milko. So right. what's, what's that? So that was one for Home and Away, then one for Neighbours with the Susan Gets Amnesia. Mm-hmm. One for home and away, one for neighbors. Complete. Ooh, oh, deadlock. Oh, deadlock. Hell yeah. We'll have the tiebreaker maybe next week at the live show. If you guys remember any weird stories from home tiebreaker away, the live show, because I think this is neighbors. a great segment. Yeah, it's funny. We'll have to find some more. Um, I want to talk about because we started talking about this in our chat, and I remembered this absolutely cooked show. It was on three p.m. weekdays every day. So if you were home sick from school in primary school when I was young. Mm. It could have been on and it would terror, it, you'd have night terrors for the rest of your life. Mm. Okay. It was called Passions. <laughs> it was like a paranormal fucking soap opera. Mm. Um, here are some of the. It was like Bold and the Beautiful on an yes. acid trip. It yes. Was just fucking it was like cooked. a fucking dummy that talked that. Yeah. I'll just read you some storylines I found. <laughs> a character trapped in a, trapped a pregnant woman in a pit, faked her own pregnancy by using a sack of flour. Stole the baby and su- successfully passed it off as her own. That's one. A character was cared for by an orangutan nurse named Precious. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> was cared for by an <laughs> orangutan nurse. Apparently she couldn't afford a nurse. And they had <laughs> an actual... I guess it was a person in an orangutan costume in a nurse outfit yeah. that would care for her. And it was a recurring character called Precious. Oh, that's so good. Um, the audience knew two characters were in a love were brother and sister, though the characters didn't know. So the audience had to watch them have sexual relationships as siblings. <laughs> that was a... Oh, uh, yeah, but that's a common one. Uh, we okay. all like that one. You, yeah. um, Tabitha, a witch, survived a tsunami by surfing on a door. <laughs> <laughs> She's a witch. That makes sense to me. Pro surfer as well. Where's a broom? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I don't know. That's, that was a that fucked up wild. show, if you remember that. I just Googled it. Um, Precious was an actual orangutan. I, an actual one? <laughs> yeah. That seems dangerous. Yeah, bro. dude. They like crush skulls and stuff. Yeah. What was that from? That was from a movie. There was an orangutan in it. Um, I don't Robin know. Williams. <laughs> Robin Williams. Because <laughs> he's hairy. <laughs> I, I don't think... Um, I'm, I'm interested in the special effects of the witch surfing the door down oh, away. Yeah. I don't even know if they could do that now, no. to be honest. Well, the doll coming to life was the most terrifying adult child looking actor. That's any, that was tiny. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. What's next? It was a lot. Uh, let's get into some fake news. Fake Hell yeah. Fake news. We haven't right. done this in a while. So, as mentioned, um, <laughs> we need to come up with something for Alex Dyson. And this bit's true. My cousin used to play footy with him because he plays AFL. Mm. Tried to get some dirt. Not dirt is he's a really nice guy with no dirt. Yeah, yeah. He's a perfect club mate. Yeah, good at footy, he said he was nice really nice. But don't use this. Don't use that. What about something <laughs> like, because um, his last name's Dyson, mm. he used to tell girls that his father invented the Dyson vacuum cleaner and they'd be like, suck on this or something like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, you got something I better? was thinking, as soon as you said Dyson, I thought you were going to say something a bit roger. Um, something about, he plays AFL, like about sucking or something. That's what I thought you were That's what, it, we got to suck on this. Yeah, but. It's got a setup because his dad's yeah. the head of it and then he's like, I'll suck. But like he was good at sucking or something. Okay, you go with what you're <laughs> thinking then. Tell us. I'm just thinking he plays AFL. That's a fact. Mm. So can we do something in that realm that might seem factual? 
uh, like he used to like slip sneaky fingers in the in the butts to distract uh, people when he's marking them or something. Yeah, they called him the AFL Hopawati or something. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Or he used to like finger under, like gr- like give him tickle under the underarms and sniff his fingers or something. <laughs> A lot of stuff with fingers. I don't know. Yeah, I like that. that. Maybe we could do that and maybe something about him doing something else, sniffing in the change rooms or something. Something about a jock strap, lucky oh, okay. jock strap, maybe. I don't think we wore jock lucky straps. Lucky jock, yeah. I think, you, I think that's an American thing. Yeah. You just wear underwear, I think. Maybe bro. he wears a box and that's he sniffs cricket. that. That's yeah, cricket. He wears it. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, do it. Do it. I. I was chatting to a mate the other day and he mentioned something really rogue about Alex Dyson. The old Triple J presenter. Yeah, yeah. He's got a podcast now, but um, he played footy with him, AFL, Mm. and they were on a team and he said he was a really nice guy, but he had this really weird habit. Mm. Uh, (laughs) They'd always be in the change rooms together, Yep. but he would wear a cricket box to play AFL, which is pretty unheard of, and he'd encourage his teammates to also wear it. What? Not the, like they'd kind of share it. Like he said, it was good luck, and they'd pass it around. He's he had a team box for AFL. Mm. I get those are some short, tight shorts, and like it's good to to show a bit of something. Or maybe he was getting hit in there and he was trying to protect it. I'm, do you do you know why he did it? I'm not sure. He said it was a lucky jock. Mm. Uh, sorry, a lucky box. So if they wanted to have a good game, he'd pass it around. But this is where it gets weird because my mate he walked into the change room once. And he was wearing it on his face like Bane from Batman. <laughs> Fuck. No way. <laughs> he was wearing it on his face like Bane from Batman. And he goes, I live in the shadows. I was born in the shadows. Yeah, what does shadows. he say? What's the quote? <laughs> I was born in the darkness. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my mate walked into the change room and there was Alex Dyson, box on face, in the shadows going... I was born in the darkness. In the shadows, maybe. I forgot the line. Shadows. Darkness. I was born in the darkness. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty confronting. And was and that... like, he was so uncomfortable, he just walked out and they never talked about it ever again. Dude. Now, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> Quite a visual. Yeah, I don't know. No, that's perfect. That was it. Yeah, that's that was fine. Was it. Yeah, that's that it. was weird as fuck. That was it. Okay, is there any other celebrities in the news? We haven't done a good uh, celeb run um, in a minute. Oh, man. Taylor Swift and She's the still NFL dating dude. Travis Kaus. Maybe we can make something up about oh, that. Oh, of course we can. Oh, yeah. So Taylor Swift still dating Travis Kaus. Yep. Kansas City just lost their last game. Everyone thinks she's cursed the team. Yes. That makes sense, actually. Because he was on a pretty good streak before her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they've actually doing to try to break the curse is um, the whole team, they've been practicing to her song, Shake It Off, to shake off the curse. Mm. Not working. It's kind of encouraging the curse. Yeah. Then they all bought Suzuki Swifts. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Still didn't work. Then they all watched uh, Mark Taylor, Australian cricket, old cricket batsman's greatest uh, innings. Still didn't work. (laughs) Wow. So now they're thinking they're going to have to flip it up and one of them's going to have to date Selena Gomez. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Now nah, maybe we should. she should cheat on him. What do you think? Yeah, or break up or something that will get them riled up. I don't know. Do you know any other footy players she could cheat with? <sighs> Tom Brady's classic. He's retired though. Yeah. Oh... LeBron James. <laughs> LeBron James. <laughs> maybe, maybe, um, Brady. Brady. Mm. Like it was just a stepping ladder to get to Brady. Oh, yeah. Or oh, Nathan Cleary. Oh. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Johns. Wow. Okay. Ben Cousins. Uh, Taylor Swift, Travis Kaus are still together. Uh, and it's going pretty well, but she's been spotted oh, uh, as a friend hanging out with someone else. Oh, no. Yeah. Who? Ryan Seacrest. (laughs) Wow. There is going to be entertainment tonight. (laughs) I I thought you were going to say OJ. (laughs) OJ Simpson. You know how OJ is bringing out his own orange juice? You think it would have happened sooner, but no. (laughs) Are you serious? Yeah. Dude, I hear it packs a punch. Yeah. (laughs) 
Is that a joke? Lots of pulp. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, of course. He's not bringing his own orange uh, juice. He bro. should. There you go. Yeah, Tom believed up. it. Oh, let's go. Um, yeah, so I have Billie Eilish coming out is uh, one, but... That was a funny thing about her coming out. Is, and I agree with her. She's like, I thought you was already knew yeah. I, I liked women too. Yeah. It's 2023. Yeah. That's literally deal. what she said. She's like, yo, what do you fucking mean? <laughs> Can you, like, Billie Eilish. What are her songs again? Bad guy. Bad guy. Bad guy slash girl. I'm a bad guy. Mm. Mm. Not feeling no. that one. No. Mm. How long have we gone for, big boy? That's one hour and five minutes. Yeah, oh. I think that was pretty good. You know who went for longer? Limp Biscuit. when I saw them. Oh, yeah, you Bro. saw Limp Bizkit. Great. Probably greatest concert of the year. What was your go-to dance move in the mosh? What do you mean go-to dance move? I feel like you, you, were, you were shimmying move. or something. You don't shimmy in the mosh, I feel like mosh, you would have been bro. crabbing in the I mosh, I don't think dude. the only mosh you've had is for your fucking hair, you thick-haired bitch. <laughs> oh, no, not thick hair. He's got such great hair. It kills me. <laughs> Doesn't even need mosh. Um, no, oh, we'll just mosh. jump. We were right near the um, near the deaf circle. Mm-hmm. Um, the sand pier, whatever they call it. Wow. Yeah, they were. We we were like we've been touching this, but I didn't want to get in, in there. Nah, they, they, the Did you whirlpool. Did you push like a girl in? Bro, just laugh. Limp Bizkit still go hard. The best thing about the Limp Bizkit, uh, for our younger listeners, you might need to Google who they are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the Beatles of our generation, we call them. <laughs> um, is that Fred Durst, the poet that he is? Mm. Some days you don't want to wake up though. That's true. Everything is fucked. Mm. And everybody sucks. Um, anyway, Fred Durst wore this. How would you describe his wig? It was like I thought it was his hair from your stories. It was, I was like, like a fuck, gray afro hair. type thing. Yeah, and then he wore a gray prison jumpsuit. Yep, he wore these shades for the whole show. Stayed yep. in character the whole show. It was someone threw their panties on stage, so he put them on the mic and, and did a song with them. Then a bloke threw his like dirty fucking boxes on, Oof. did the same thing. It was such bad. That's bro. nasty. Nah, it's funny. Yeah. It was funny. Um, and then stayed in character the whole show, and then as soon as the last song he played, Break Stuff, a beautiful song that it is. It is all about the he said, she said bullshit. Anyway, uh, we all start leaving. He comes back on stage in a white shirt and his backwards red hat, which he's Iconic. famous for, like a normal human. I'm like, yo, I could have actually dressed like this the whole show, but I just didn't because I'm a strange I'm choice, a character isn't it? Now. It's like walking Phoenix, bro. He's in character the whole his yeah, whole fucking wow. life now. Wow, it's sick. That is cool. Yeah. Shout is there any other bands that are on your like childhood bucket list, teen bucket list? That's a good question. Childhood bucket list. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Mm, so we'll just, get back to you on yeah. that. I'll get back to you on that. We'll have to make a list one day of things we need to do. Mm. All Fr- right. Frenchie and the talent, maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't forget, uh, sign up to the patreon.com slash Tom and Frenchie. Uh, this, this coming week oh, is yeah. the live podcast. So if you're in Sydney... Sign up to Patreon costs five dollars, and you can come for free. You can come it's, have beers with us on a Tuesday night. Um, it's probably our, I think it's our podcast Christmas. Yeah, party, it is. Isn't it? Okay, yeah. we'll be out for a late one then. And Brisbane, there's eleven tickets left to the Thursday show film special. Don't miss it. Hell yeah, brother! Any last words, Alex? Um, muchos besos, amigos. Oh, um, muy, com- oh, wow. muy peligroso. He hit him oh, with that. Wow, he that, said something about pelicans. Yeah, bro, he hit him with that Russian. Let's go. Yeah, dude.